Look at that depressing chart. It shows what happens after recessions, happens to employment. Again and again, hiring recovered after about two years. But the current recovery, it's the red line, is much slower, much weaker. Why? Well, one reason is that employers now face thousands and thousands of pages of rules. That makes it scary to expand because no one even understands what those laws say. Even the lawyers who specialize in them don't understand that. Betsy McCoy has heard complaints about that from businesses. She's a health care expert who's been following Obama's biggest new regulation, Obamacare. She reads it so we don't have to. Bob Luddy is a businessman who makes these fans. Well, actually much bigger and fancier ventilation systems that places like restaurants use to suck away bad smells and gases that might blow you up. So, you making money? We are making money, and in spite of everything, we're still expanding, but it's uh, more difficult as in this environment because of HR rules. Uh, Human resources uh, rules. Yeah, which don't make any sense, really, even for the employees. Uh, uncertainty about taxes and other regulations that are coming into the marketplace. For example, Department of Energy wants to regulate fan motors over five horsepower when we're already in a highly competitive industry. All right, they, they say they want to regulate them to make the exhaust fans more energy efficient. They say it's necessary to carry out the purposes of Part A1 of the EPCA, whatever that is, to conserve the energy resources of the nation. That's what the industry does. They're on my does. side. Yeah. What do That's you mean what the, the industry in does? You just want to make money. Uh, we are constantly testing fans. There's an industry organization that has a scientific approach to this. And you're already trying to make them more efficient because it'll help you sell fans. Absolutely. <laughs> now you're talking about the free market, John. <laughs> but they just don't get that? <laughs> they totally don't understand it. And you've been in business for 35 years. You built your company from nothing to now 700 employees. It was different 35 years ago? Oh, absolutely. I mean, compared to today, it seemed like there was no regulation back then. Certainly not at the federal level. Maybe we had some state things we had to deal with. Now the federal government's going to be engaged in our health care. After 25 years of, of right, being well, self-insured and efficient, we don't need their help. Let's talk about that. I have my own copy of Obamacare. <laughs> oh, boy. But <laughs> mine is much fresher than yours because mm -hmm. I didn't read mine. But... Mm -hmm. You've read that, and what, what do companies tell you? Well, they call the you employer all the mandate is one of the most troubling parts of it. This employer mandate says that every employer with 50 or more full-time workers has to provide health insurance, and not just any health insurance. It has to be the one-size-fits-all government-designed plan, which will cost about twice as much as what most employers currently offer. So a lot of companies who have um, high turnover, they have a cheap plan. These are mostly young people. They're going to have to get a fancier plan. Well, and let me explain what they're going to do. So many, insure, many uh, companies are going to simply stop offering insurance. McKinsey and Company did a survey and found that over a third of employers are already considering not offering insurance anymore. Because the penalty is cheaper. It's just a couple thousand That's bucks. That's right. Here's, here's the point. This employer mandated plan adds a dollar seventy nine per hour every hour to the cost of hiring a busboy or a waitress or a receptionist actually to the cost of hiring any full-time employee but when you're hiring neurosurgeons a dollar seventy nine doesn't matter when you're hiring entry-level people it really does It's two thousand bucks a year that's almost. right so employers can stop offering insurance and pay a penalty and they will and, and some they will. already have said they will that's right so here are people who were getting insurance on the job and had a full-time job. Now they're at risk gonna, of a part-time job and no insurance. Still? We're going to try to continue our, our work covering our workers under our self-insurance, but it's going to raise the cost for us and for the employees. So you may expand less, hire fewer people. Absolutely. You expand with new capital. And if the government takes your capital, you expand less. And this drives some people Offshore, you say the components you buy, motors, bearings, filtration, all those manufacturers have moved offshore? Uh, many of them have, or most in, the, in those particular industries. And if you think about it, America should be able to compete regardless of labor costs with any country in the world because modern manufacturing uses machine tools. But if you put enough regulation and enough trouble, it forces these so companies. So it's not the cost of the American worker, it's just the confusion over I don't this? think it's the cost of the American worker at all. 
Of course, large unionized operations, yes, it, that's a big issue. But for normal manufacturing, modern manufacturing, it's highly capital investment intensive, and labor has to be highly skilled, and uh, we have the most skilled labor in the free world. Now, Betsy, this law, you tell me, says that the employee cannot be asked to cover more than 9% of their income in premiums, which Nine sounds... 9.5% of their household income, and I was going to tell Bob kind. about this because this is going to be a nightmare for you. You literally, as an employer, will have to ask every employee, what does your husband or wife make? Because you have to know their income. household income, not just your employee's income. So then, if you're hiring somebody, you may want to hire somebody whose wife or husband makes more money so that you can ask them to contribute more to their health insurance. This is a nightmare. And the, what I would think would be the only hope for health care is if you get these health savings accounts, these high deductible plans where the employees have a little more skin in the game and make They're some of their own of decisions. They are going to go out. Of, they're not officially banned in here. No, but the way the law is structured, it's going to be almost impossible to get one. All the plans are going to be the same. And the plan has to cover things like alcoholism treatment, drug treatment, psychiatry, contraception. Though so if you get another politician in there, they may ban. Con it's just well, all up you, to the whims of the You're raising something state. really interesting because women were told, ah, oh, contraception is guaranteed here. It isn't. This law says that your plan will include whatever the current occupant of the White House says you ought to have in your health insurance. And the next occupant of the White House may say something completely different. Who wants the president making all those decisions for you? Bob, they're trying to help us. They're trying to protect people. Well, I think the central problem is that individuals and, and small companies make much better economic decisions than any government ever could. And the government says, well, we're going to spend another billion dollars here and a billion dollars there. We've got to get away from this so that business grows faster than government or we'll have higher unemployment, we'll have more stress on the middle class. And that's exactly what you've seen for the last four years.